What's going on folks, Cryo here. In this video, we have another Shadowlands dungeon overview. Today, taking a look at the Necrotic Wake, checking out notable trash mobs and boss mechanics. You already know the deal, let's get it. On your way to the first boss, you will encounter Patchwork Soldier. These pesky mobs will continuously leap onto random players dealing minor physical damage. It would behoove your party to stack up to eliminate these quickly. Corpse Harvester. This mob can deal some sneaky damage. Players should aim to interrupt drained fluids as quickly as possible. This is a channeled ability that deals plague damage every second for 4 seconds. They will also throw flesh, inflicting physical damage to random players. Stitched Vanguard. These should be dealt with quickly. They will deal heavy physical damage to tanks with Bone Claw, and even more so when under the effects of Seething Rage. This buff increases the Vanguard's attack speed by 10% and stacks. More importantly, be sure to interrupt Meat Shield. The Vanguard will channel for 3 seconds, building a shield that lasts for 30 seconds. The longer the channel, the bigger the shield. Blight Bag Similar to the Patchwork Soldiers, Blight Bags will leap onto random players dealing physical damage. However, upon death, these will burst. Disgusting Guts will inflict plague damage to nearby players and leave behind a 4 second dot. Zolramis Gatekeeper You will encounter at least two of these before the first boss. You should interrupt Necrotic Bolt as it will deal damage and absorb healing. Wrath of Zolram is an unavoidable spell that rains down obvious giant bolts of shadow damage. Clinging Darkness is an uninterruptible spell cast that applies a dot. This dot will deal damage every 1 second for 30 seconds and can stack. This can be dispelled, however when it is, it will jump to another player for the remaining duration. Long story short, on higher difficulties, healers will want to dispel this to spread out the damage, or until it is applied to a class that can endure it. Blightbone is the perfect first boss. It is mostly a tank and spank with a minor twist. Before engaging, ensure your party has cleared enough trash around the boss since there will be movement involved. Tanks should be mindful of crunch, this is your typical tank buster. Periodically, Blightbone will stand still and cast Fetid Gas. It's essentially a noxious cloud that lasts for 2 minutes, standing within the area inflicts nature damage every 2 seconds while preventing all actions and spell casting. Blightbone occasionally fixates on a player with Heaving Wretch hurling Toxic Spew in a cone in front of him, inflicting nature damage that leaves a dot. With this wretch, Blightbone also spews forth three carrion worms. Fixated players will want to make sure that they do not aim their spew at the party, reducing the amount of dots going out. Now, speaking of the carrion worms, these mobs hunger for blood, searching out random players to feast upon. They do not have a threat table, but they are susceptible to roots, stuns, and displacements. The party should do their best to keep them semi-stacked because on mythic difficulty and higher, upon expiration they will leave behind a pool of noxious goo and you do not want to run out of room too quickly. While the worms are alive, they will attempt to bite their target. Every successful bite grants a stack of blood gorge, increasing the worm's damage by 50%. If the worm reaches 3 stacks, it will explode, spraying all players with noxious goo that inflicts nature damage every 2 seconds for 30 seconds avoid doing this. The TLDR for this fight, tanks mitigate crunch. Avoid spraying each other with heaving wretch by staying loosely spread and then stack up to kite the carrion worms together. This will keep the noxious gas clouds they spawn semi-stacked making them easier to avoid. Nice and easy first boss. On your way to the second boss, you will encounter Zolramis Necromancer. These tricksters can be deceivingly overwhelming, but let's break it down. Necromancers will mainly cast Necrotic Bolt and Grim Fate. Now we already know about the Bolt, but Grim Fate will condemn a player, causing them to inflict shadow damage to allies within 6 yards after 4 seconds. This is depicted by a large blue-green swirly, be sure to spread out. The last casted spell is Animate Dead. I bet you can guess what it does. Be mindful of the summoning location as it will deal shadow damage to anyone within 4 yards. These necromancers are always surrounded by a brittle bone horde. Brittle bone mage will primarily cast frostbolt, chilling targets and reducing their movement speed by 10%. This effect stacks, so interrupt when you can spare it. 
Brittlebone Warrior will only melee their current target, nothing too scary. Now these underlings are protected by an aura, Undying Minions. This means they are unkillable and have the ability to regenerate 10% health every one second. It is not even worth trying to DPS them as it will just waste time. By killing the Necromancer, you will cause all minions under this aura to perish as well. Skeletal Marauder Be mindful of the Gruesome Cleave. As the name suggests, this will deal damage to all enemies within 8 yards. Rasping Scream needs to be interrupted as a high priority. This is a 15 yard AoE fear that also slows movement speed. Zolramus Bonemender Aside from the common necrotic bolt we all know and love so much, these cast Final Bargain. This heals a friendly target for 80% of its maximum health, then inflicts shadow damage equal to 4% of the caster's maximum health every 1 second for 20 seconds. This can be stopped with a stun, displacement, or CC ability. Finally, Bone Mend. This is another heal that should also be stopped. Zolramus Sorcerer. This mob's unique ability is Shadow Well. The caster summons a Dark Well at a player's location. Players standing within it cannot be healed, so sidestep out of it. Additionally, the well erupts every one second, inflicting shadow damage to enemies within three yards. Narzuda. Now this mob is kind of a pain and will most likely be skipped more often than not, but since we like to be thorough, let's talk about it. Do I even need to mention Necrotic Bolt? Luckily, we already know another mechanic, Grim Fate. Something new, Shared Agony. Narzuda binds two players together, inflicting shadow damage every one second. This effect stacks, however, moving 25 yards apart breaks the chains. Do note that breaking the chains will deal a final burst of shadow damage. Dark Shroud is a purgeable shield that makes Nerzuda immune to physical attacks. Remove it quickly. Skeletal Monstrosity. This is another example of a mob that will most likely be skipped, but we don't do that here. Shatter is the main cast, dealing minor physical damage to the tank. Reaping Winds is a bit more exciting. Winds pull players in, reducing their movement speed for 4 seconds. As the storm ends, the monstrosity hits all players still within the storm with Chill Scythe. This is heavy physical damage and your movement speed will be slowed by 60% for 8 seconds. The final ability is Grave Spike or Frigid Spike. Both names appear so whichever one makes the final cut, just know spikes of ice erupt from the earth inflicting frost damage to players within 3.5 yards of the eruption and knocks them upwards. Zolramus Bone Carver If your party skipped Nerzuda, this will most likely be the first time you encounter one of these. Not to worry, you did not miss out on anything except Bone Flay. The caster deals a burst of physical damage and leaves an additional dot dealing damage every one second for 20 seconds. This also reduces maximum health by 15%. They are susceptible to stuns, so tanks you may want to be on the lookout for this. Brittlebone Crossbowman An additional Brittlebone minion. These will just sit back and cast shoot, dealing minor physical damage. Again, just deal with the necromancer at the center of the pack, and the rest will topple over. The second boss, Amarth the Harvester, had the potential to be a cool boss but is kind of underwhelming. To start, Amarth will cast Necrotic Bolt at random players. This still causes players to absorb healing. For tanks, watch out for Unholy Frenzy. Amarth enrages his mount Bonefang, increasing its attack speed by 50% for 16 seconds. This simulates regular melee hits so manage your active mitigation and cooldowns as needed. While we're talking about Bonefang, he will also occasionally cast Necrotic Breath. This is a beam that will rotate, dealing damage to players struck and reduce their healing received by 50%. On Mythic difficulty and higher, players struck by the breath will also receive a dot that deals additional damage and reduces their healing by 30% for 10 seconds. Throughout the fight, the boss will cast Land of the Dead, summoning reanimated warriors and mages. On Mythic Difficulty and higher, this will also summon reanimated crossbowmen. While the summoning is occurring, players will want to avoid the spawn locations as they will deal shadow damage. The reanimated warrior will deal minor melee damage but should still be taunted and picked up by the tanks. The mage should not only be interrupted to help stack up the mobs, but also to prevent Frostbolt Volley from going off. This will deal minor damage and slow movement speed by 10%. This ability will stack, although keep in mind it is only on Mythic difficulty and higher. The crossbowman's shoot cannot be interrupted, but the mob can be CC'd. 
Now these minions are a very minor annoyance, but parties should deal with them as quickly as possible to lessen the effects of the next mechanic, Final Harvest. Amarth harvests the bodies of his minions. If the minion was still alive, it explodes and inflicts damage to all players. However, if the party destroyed the minions, the corpses still explode, inflicting damage, but only to players within 8 yards. This is depicted by a green swirly. So, to reduce AoE party damage, kill the adds and move away from their bodies. On Mythic difficulty and higher, a greater incentive to destroy the minions is Amarth's Tortured Echoes mechanic. For every minion or player that is consumed via Final Harvest, buffs Amarth. This buff causes the boss to pull shadow damage every 3 seconds and stacks. The TLDR for this fight, tanks mitigate the extra damage coming in from Bonefang's enraged effect and pick up minions. Party members should do their best to stack up the reanimated minions to not only dispatch of them quickly, but to dodge their explosions more easily during final harvest. Rinse and repeat until the boss perishes. Once the boss is dead, wait for the carrion winged champions to spawn. Click on them and ascend into the Stitchworks. On your way to the third boss, you will encounter spare parts. These sentient body parts will fixate random players, just stack up and cleave them down. Loyal Creation Like the stitched vanguards, tanks be mindful of Bone Claw. This will result in heavy physical damage. Everyone needs to dodge Spine Crush. This is an obvious AoE slam that inflicts physical damage to enemies within 8 yards, knocking them back. If the Loyal Creation lives longer than its creator, it will become enraged, increasing its melee attack speed by 50%. Kyrian Stitchwork These are more deadly constructs. Dispatch of these quickly, or tanks will be overwhelmed with stacks of Tenderize. This deals physical damage, but more importantly, increases physical damage taken by 15% for 16 seconds. This can and will stack. Stitchworks will also cast Mutilate, dealing minor physical damage to an enemy. Corpse Collector. Again, this mob can deal some sneaky damage to party members. We know Throw Flesh deals physical damage and Drain Fluids is a channel that should be interrupted, but we do not know about Gore Splatter. The caster drenches all nearby players in Gore, inflicting plague damage and leaving a dot dealing damage every one second for six seconds. This can and should be interrupted. Flesh Crafter. This mob will occasionally throw Cleaver. This Cleaver will deal physical damage to the first target it impacts. What this means is players can soak it instead of its intended target if they so choose. This can save someone's life in a hectic situation, so keep your eyes peeled. Be sure to interrupt Repair Flesh ASAP. If successful, the crafter will heal a nearby construct for 5% of its maximum health every 1 second for 8 seconds. Now, as soon as the stitchwork trash is cleared, a gauntlet of sorts begins. There are 3 waves and not enough time to get a resurrection cast off in between, so mind your mana and battle reses. Wave 1 Stitching Assistant is a combination of Flesh Crafters and Corpse Collectors, meaning this mob will throw Flesh, throw Cleaver, and drain Fluids. Endure the heavy physical damage and interrupt the channel. The Separation Assistant is the more deadly of the pair. This mob will also cast Throw Flesh, but also has new tricks. Morbid Fixation causes the Assistant to fixate on a nearby target for 8 seconds, increasing its damage done by 100% but reducing movement speed by 50%. Simply run away. Separate Flesh is a melee attack that deals a chunk of physical damage. Wave 2 Gore Grind maintains the Construct mentality. He will cast Tenderize and Mutilate on tanks. Additionally, Gore Grind will cast Gut Slice. This is a 10 yard frontal cone dealing physical damage and leaves behind a bleed for an additional 12 seconds. Tanks, do not face this towards your friends. Gore Grind Bits are the second to last rendition of the Patchwork Soldiers. They will only leap around dealing minor physical damage. Wave 3 Rot Spew. Tanks can take a breather as he will not cast Tenderize. He will however still cast Mutilate. Additionally, Rot Spew casts Spew Disease, spewing filth at the tank, inflicting plague damage on impact, and creating a disease cloud. This obvious pool should not be stood in as it will deal plague damage every one second. Rotspew Leftovers are the final form of Patchwork Soldiers. They will only leap around, dealing minor physical damage. The third boss fight will begin immediately after the final add from the gauntlet dies, so ensure you are not standing too close to the boss's platform if you do not wish to pull early. Surgeon Stitch Flesh. This encounter essentially has two phases. First, 
where the boss is not targetable, and second, when he gets pulled in. Trust me, this fight will be the bane of the pug community early on. Which reminds me, share this video with everybody. Post it to your favorite Discord, on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook. I don't care, just get it out there. It's a tremendous sign of support for me, but ultimately the more people that have access to these mechanics earlier on, the more successful your pug runs will go. Just food for thought. During phase one, players will engage one of Stitch Flesh's creations while he assaults you from the safety of his workbench. The surgeon will continuously throw Stitch Needle, sharp needles inflicting physical damage and causing the player to bleed for 10 seconds. This is unavoidable, so healers just be ready to press your button. Stitch Flesh will also periodically throw Embalming Icker at random players. This jar of disgusting fluids will deal damage to anyone within 5 yards, leaves behind a pool, and is depicted by a green swirly. Do not stand in the pool. Because of this mechanic, party members will want to do their best to not stand in places where the pools will become detrimental. For example, in front of the boss's table, or in the center of the room. Now, let's talk about the creation. This mob is drenched in a rotting liquid that inflicts plague damage to all enemies every 3 seconds. This effect stacks, meaning the longer it is alive, the greater the pulse damage. This mob does have a tank buster, Mutilate. Tanks will want to ensure that they have active mitigation up. The final and most important ability is Meat Hook. The construct hurls its meat hook through the air, pulling the first target it hits to its location, dealing a massive chunk of physical damage. This mechanic is needed to grip the boss off the workbench and into the arena. It is telegraphed with a red arrow that will follow the targeted player during the 4 second channel. After the 4 seconds are up, the red arrow will stop moving, illustrating where the hook will be flying off to. Players have 2 seconds to move out of the way or risk being gripped. Ideally, you will want to aim this mechanic towards Stitch Flesh and dodge the hook. This will cause the boss to be gripped into the arena and become attackable, triggering phase 2. While Stitch Flesh is on the ground, he will mainly cast Sever Flesh on the tank. This is once again a chunk of physical damage, so tanks be sure to mitigate it. On Mythic difficulty and higher, Surgeon Stitch Flesh fixates on a nearby target for 8 seconds, increasing his damage done by 100%, but reducing movement speed by 60%. For the love of your healer sanity, actually run away if you are fixated. After a short time, the boss will escape and return to his workbench, thus starting phase 1 over again. Now I am sure you are all wondering what happens if you kill the creation before you manage to grip the boss down, fret not, Stitch Flesh will cast Awaken Creation, causing a new construct to spawn and join the fray. Keep in mind this ability can and will be cast even if your group has not dispatched of the first creation, meaning your party can become overwhelmed. What this means for you and your party is to eliminate the creations as soon as one hook is used. Even if you miss, it's not worth waiting around for the second hook as the festering rot stacks will be high and the new creation will join soon. This will become more apparent once you begin to press into more difficult key levels. The TLDR for this fight, aim the Construct's meat hook ability at Stitch Flesh and dodge its grip as quickly as you can to reduce the encounter time. Do not stand in front of the boss's workbench prematurely or risk dropping embalming ichor pools there. Pop cooldowns when Stitch Flesh is yoinked into the arena, and that's it. Fun fact, the Meat Hook ability has an insane range, so do not kill yourself while trying to aim it by standing in the noxious fog. As long as the arrow is pointing at Stitch Flesh, it should snag him. There are cases where the hook will only go about 3 yards and then retract. If this occurs, do not flame the party member or the tank, it's just a glitch or a bug, really nothing you can do about it. Second fun fact, the boss is still susceptible to Meat Hook should you have a creation alive during Phase 2. This is a great way to help save a fixated party member. On your way to the last boss, you will encounter nothing. Just take the portal and you're ready to go. Now Thor the Rhyme Binder. This final boss has one phase and is a fairly simple encounter but becomes exponentially harder as you progress keystone levels. For tanks, the boss will primarily cast an uninterruptible spell, Icy Shard. Although the name can be deceiving, it is counted as physical damage, so your active mitigation will keep the damage at bay. On Mythic difficulty and higher, Nalthor will shield himself with Icebound Aegis. While the shield is active, waves of frosty energy emanate from him, inflicting frost damage to all players 
every 3 seconds and increases the damage taken of Icebound Aegis by 10% for 5 seconds. This effect stack. Meaning, the longer the shield is up, the more AoE pulse damage is going out. Now for the rest of the party, Nalthor will choose a random player and cast Frozen Binds. The player afflicted will be rooted and receive ticking damage for 12 seconds. When this effect expires or is dispelled, it spreads to all players within 16 yards, as depicted by a large blue circle. Any player not rooted will want to leave the circle immediately. Healers in classes with root removals, druids, monks, etc. Be nice and wait for players to leave the circle before removing the binds, or else risk rooting multiple players and increasing the amount of damage going out. The second group dodge ability is Comet Storm. Icy comets drop from the sky, landing at players' feet, inflicting frost damage. The ability will follow players, so you will want to continue running until the channel is over. Damage taken by the Comet Storm is increased by 25% for each time you get struck, meaning you will not want to stand still and take too many to the face. Additionally, you will want to watch where you path your personal Comet Storm as to not run over or cut off other players. Now, throughout the fight, you might notice that the boss will be gaining energy. Upon reaching 100 energy, Nalthor banishes a player to the lower reaches of Zolramis with Dark Exile. Players banished in such a fashion must navigate a frozen gauntlet to rejoin the fight. Banished players have 50 seconds. If you fail to escape, you will be slain outright. Since tanks are not chosen, please forgive this horrible representation via paint. Now, while you are down on the lower platform, there will be blizzards in Comet. We already know about the comets, and the blizzards do exactly what you might think. Aside from dealing damage, players hit with blizzard become chilled, reducing their movement speed by 70% for 5 seconds, making it that much more difficult to dodge everything else. On your way towards the end of the platform, a Zolramus Siphoner will be channeling Enfeeble on you. As if snow and ice wasn't enough, Enfeeble is a beam of necrotic energy that inflicts shadow damage every one second and reduces your haste and movement speed by 50% up to 5 seconds. Navigate the gauntlet, kill the ad, and click on the Gilded Champion. This champion will lift you to safety and also increase your critical strike chance by 100% for 15 seconds. On Mythic difficulty and higher, while on the lower platform, freezing winds buffet the player, continually reducing their movement speed by 2% every 6 seconds. Upon expiring, an area of Razor Shard Ice is created covering the ground. Its size is based on the number of Frigid Cold applications gained. What this means is players returning to the fight from the lower platform will want to watch their timer and ensure they are standing near an edge. This will cause most of the pool to be out of bounds and help keep the room clear. The pool will last for 2.5 minutes and should you run over them you will take a chunk of frost damage and be slowed by 25%. The TLDR for this fight is Break the Icebound Aegis Shield ASAP. Watch your feet while dodging the blue swirlies of Comet Storm and spread out before dispelling Frozen Binds. If chosen for the lower platform, dodge everything, eliminate the ad, and click on the Gilded Champion to return to the fight. Drop your Razor Shard Ice Pools on the edge of the platform and have fun. Thank you for stopping by as always i hope you learned something to take back to your group to make your dungeon runs more successful comment down below any questions comments concerns or suggestions you may have or feel free to pop into my twitch chat I, don't forget i stream monday through thursday starting at roughly 9 pm eastern standard time stop by say hi i appreciate you all and until next time stay frosty